Okay guys, on this segment of the video, we're going to talk about uh, formulas and how within a formula we can actually use information from that formula to solve for what the ratios are within those formulas. Okay? To do that, we need to have some terminology down. So up on our screen here, we see that uh, first of all is the term empirical formula. Okay, So the word empirical kind of means your smallest or your most basic of your formulas. So an empirical formula always is the smallest whole number ratio. Um, of a molecule. And you probably want to highlight or circle this word molecule here because when we work with empirical formulas, we're usually working with molecular compounds because they can have multiple ratios within those. Um, it's not the actual formula for the compound. So for example, the empirical formula that we could say is maybe something like CH2. Now the empirical formula um, CH2 does not mean that this has one carbon and two hydrogens. It just tells us that your ratio is one to two hydrogens. Uh, this empirical formula could be any multiplication of that uh, a one to two ratio. So if you're looking at the molecular formula for a compound, um, what we do is we take the empirical formula times some sort of n or some sort of integer. Okay. So for example, if we had the empirical formula CH2 and our integer was six, we would just take C, the C, which is a 1, times 6, and the H, which is a 2, times 6, and our molecular formula for our compound would be C6H12, okay? Um, we use this because a lot of times in chemistry, uh, we can find the ratio between carbons and hydrogens within a, a lab process, but we may not be able to find the actual molar mass of that substance or the actual molecular formula. So sometimes in the world of chemistry it's enough information just to know that ratio. So that ratio is known as the empirical formula. Now from that what we can do is actually use percent composition which we started with uh, the other day and use percent composition to determine empirical formulas because we know the percent by mass of all the substances in there. Okay, So to do that we have to go through a five-step process. So let's go through the process verbally first, and then we'll do a practice one with it. First thing, list the elements known to be in the compound. <clears throat> Identify the percent composition of each element in the compound. Assume you have 100 grams of the substance. Convert that to a percentage. Convert the mass calculated from above to moles using atomic mass of each substance. Determine your smallest whole number ratio by dividing. Then use multipliers to make each element's number of moles a whole number, and then from that finally write your empirical formula. Now that doesn't make a lot of sense unless we actually go through a practice problem and solve it that way. So we're going to go to the board now and work through a process of doing empirical formulas. Okay, let's assume we have a compound and we have solved for the percent composition of that compound. So we know that that compound is 62 percent carbon, a little over 5 percent hydrogen, 20 percent, 20 20.7 percent oxygen and about 12.1 percent nitrogen. Okay, so we have a molecule here, and we know it has carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, in it, but we don't know its empirical formula. So what we're going to do is try to solve for that using these percentages. Okay, so our first step is to assume we have 100 grams of each one of these. So if I have 100 grams total here, that means that my percentages then can be changed into grams. So 62% of 100 grams is just like saying 62.1 grams of that. 62 or 5.21% of 100 grams would be 5.21 grams. And we can do that for all four substances. So now out of a 100 gram sample, or for a total of 100 grams, these would be the amounts I'd have for each one of those. The next is take these masses and then convert to moles using the atomic mass. So we're going to do a real quick stoichiometry for each one of these based off their atomic masses. So for carbon, we know that there is 12.01 grams per one mole for carbon. For hydrogen, it's 1.01 .01 grams per one mole. For oxygen, we know it's 16.00 grams 
per mole. And for nitrogen, we know it's 14.01 grams per mole. Okay, looking these values up on the periodic table. Now, we're not going to use 32 here or 28 here because these are not diatomics in this scenario because they're part of a compound. So we just use their individual uh, masses there. From this, we then calculate basically a mole ratio between these compounds. So we went from a gram ratio by doing stoichiometry, we can now get a mole ratio instead. So the 62.1 divided by your 12.01 and I get 5.17 Zero six nine moles. Now I'm not rounding this number off yet because we're not done with it. Five point two one divided by one point zero one should be close to five point two ish. It's actually five point one five eight four moles. Twenty point seven divided by the sixteen. I get 1.29375 moles. And finally, our 12.01, sorry, 12.1 divided by 14.01, and we get 0 0.83, sorry, 0.86366 nine moles, okay? And again, I'm randomly running these out way past the number of significant figures we need to make this process work. Okay? Now I have my mole ratio. So I have this many moles for that many moles for that many moles for that many moles. Okay? And an empirical formula basically is giving us a mole ratio within that formula, but we need whole numbers. So to get these to whole numbers, what I'm going to do for each one of them, I'm going to divide them by the smallest. So since 0.863669 is the smallest, I'm going to divide them by that value in each case. I'll draw some lines to separate these out for you guys. So I'll take the top one. 5.17069 divided by 0.863669. And I get an answer of 5.986, etc. Now that number is very close to 6, so I'm basically getting a value of about 6. So what we're saying is that the carbon has 6 times more of it than the nitrogen. Do the, do the same thing for the next one. 5.1584 divided by 0.863669, and I get 5.972, etc. Again, extremely close to six, so we're approximately a six to one ratio. This one obviously down here, that divided by itself would equal one, so we got a one. Do the same thing for the middle one, 1 1.29375 divided by 0.863669, and now I get a 1.4979. This number is not close to one, it's not close to two, it's dead center between those. So I have basically about a 1.5 compared to everything else. Now for my empirical formula, if I wanted to write it, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, this would be my empirical formula if they were all whole numbers, but they're not. So I can't have a six to six 
to 1.5 to 1. That's not possible. But what I can do is take all these values, take them times 2, to make them all whole numbers. So if I do that, the 6 becomes a 12, that becomes a 12, this becomes a 3, and that becomes a 2. So then my true empirical formula here is C12, H12, O3, N2. And that would be my empirical formula for this compound. Okay? Now, if you take a look at the process, let's walk through it one more time, making sure that we're all comfortable with it. Take your percentages that you know from percent composition calculation. So that's where these numbers would come from, is from percent composition, a step you've done before. Assume you have 100 grams. You can assume 1 gram or 85 grams or 92.4 grams. It doesn't really matter what assumption you make. Um, we just do 100, so you can just convert the numbers to grams without doing any math. So we assume we have 100 grams, so here's my mass I'd have of each one. Use stoichiometry or that relationship between the atomic mass and moles to figure out how many moles you have of each thing. This is your mole ratio, but we need a whole number. So the first step into that process of getting them to whole numbers is divide all of the numbers by the smallest one. So 0.86 divided by itself gave us a 1. 5.17 gave us a number very close to 6, uh, so we assumed it was 6. This one gave us a number, again, very close to 6. This one, however, gave us a number very close to 1.5 or somewhere in between. Now, what you're going to get is either numbers close to a whole number, close to a 0.5, possibly close to a 0.33 or a third, and at worst case scenario, something that's very close to a 0.25 or a fourth. Okay, So typically, your ratios are going to be somewhere in there. Anything more complex than that, and you really couldn't do the, this way, you'd have to have a different method. So we're looking for something that's close to a half, a third, a fourth, or a whole number. Anything above that, and we won't worry about it, especially for the scope of our class. So we're about 1.5, again the 1, which gives us this ratio. However, we can't have a decimal in our empirical formulas, so we multiply them all times 2 to get the empirical formula as you see there. Okay? So that's an example problem for that. What you guys can do then is actually go back to our unknown nitrogen compound that was in our percent composition problem, and you can use that as another practice problem for solving for empirical formulas.